What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today, I actually came up with this really cool team around 3 days ago in order to one-shot Bommel 90 of the Hard Doom Tower using the Christmas Fusion in Nishak Vermin Lord, two ally attack champions, an increased attack and turn meter champion, and also a nuka to take down the waves. So, in my first video, it was actually needing 9 bombs in order to take down this boss of a one-shot. And then I optimized it on Hell Hades channel, where I'll leave it in the description below to go and check out. Where we managed to take down the threshold from 9 to 7 bombs. And I thought that was amazing for the vast majority of the player base going for this fusion champion. As it kind of eliminates so much of the RNG process. And then a big shout out to HH Gaming and Chosen, where we actually put it all into one place on the Aftershock website, which I'll also leave below. Where we had all of the stat requirements and how much attack that you need on Nishak Vermin Lord in order to one shot Bommel based on the amount of bombs that you put on the boss itself. So that was really cool. But I actually wanted to do this video, which is not going to be based around the team, but I'll explain it for anybody that's not aware. Where I want to break down the different options of ally attack champions out there and the ones that I highly recommend and you guys potentially preparing for the future when Bommel next comes into rotation. Unless you manage to get Nishak Vermin Lord done before this um, reset finishes of the Doom Tower. And then also I want to speak about some increased attack and turn meter champions. In case you don't have an Arbiter or you just want to use a different strategy without an Arbiter. And then a weakened champion in the slot of your Baron, right? So I'm going to kind of go over that. And then I'll also speak about some weakened champions that could be really, really cool on the waves as well in taking down those coroners because they're very, very tedious. Um, I'll just kind of explain how the run works uh, very briefly. We'll do it live for you right now. But if you guys want to see the full video in depth, uh, be sure to go and check out the video on Hades channel. Or some of the other amazing content creators out there that actually cover this team as well. And thank you guys so much for all the likes, the subscriptions, and all of that good stuff over the past week. It's been really overwhelming, but it's been a blast um, showing these teams to you guys. Alright, so we're just going to come through here. This is all presets, and then Baron's going to one-shot. Boom. Alright, so how this kind of works is, we have the increased attack um, ability. We then have our ally attack in long bid. Then we're going to place some bombs with a um, Nishak Vermin Lord, and there's the weaken from the ally attack of an Arbiter. And this was the new speed tuning that I came up with, right? Then we've got another ally attack where we didn't bring in the Nishak Vermin Lord, unfortunately. And this is where I want to showcase other options out there. And then we place bombs. Extra bombs. And then this one should be a one shot with a seven. And there we go. So 20 turns. If I did it on full auto, it would have been a 40 second run. And I think that is really, really strong. Now, what I do want to kind of do is eliminate that RNG process for you of which champion should you use instead of Kreela. Not to say that she's not an amazing option. You've got that 75% chance to bring Nishak into it. But then there's that 25% RNG element that Nishak won't join the ally attack as she's only a free turn ally attack champion. Or should I say free champions? And then also, if you don't have a Nuka or if you don't want to build an Arbiter for accuracy, uh, which other options can you replace here? And that's kind of the main things. So I guess let's just get straight into it. And we are on the test server today just so I could showcase that run to you guys. As I don't have Nishak on my main account as of today. As I'm grinding the fusion the same way that you guys are. So ally attack champions. Let's just quickly talk about Kreela. Now she was a previous fusion. And that was the reason why I really wanted to showcase her. But she's also very strong for the waves. And I think that's very crucial to understand here. Because she does an AoE ability right? So places a 50% increased attack and attacks all enemies. Which actually scales pretty nice for damage output. But then she does have an ally attack on a three random allies. And because it's only three, as I said before, there's that chance that Nishak won't join the ally attack, which is completely fine. Like this run is only 40 to 1 minutes and 15 seconds in that kind of threshold. Um, once it's optimized. So it's alright to just replay the run. You're not sitting there for 5 minutes anyway. But if you do care about this, you will need to book this champion. It's one of those ally attack champs that you need to book for 100%. And then you only get the free random allies. So very strong option, but probably not one of the best out there. Um, the next ones will be uh, Lana Faru, a, a fusion champion that I didn't go for, actually. Because I felt like he was really underwhelming. But for anybody that does have him, potentially in the vault if you summoned him, or did the fusion, 
he actually then teams up with all allies to attack a single enemy and this is very strong because bringing all the allies in with some crit damage as well um adding to that initial damage that you put onto bommel i think is a really cool thing honestly and then he's got some sustainability for the waves and some damage output with the flicker barrier to actually take down those coroners on wave two so if you have a champion like lunafaru you might actually be able to afford to have free ally attack champions right and eliminate the nuka spot to make this more consistent for a farmable basis because then you'll then be bringing free ally attacks then mitigating the chance of not procking the bombs that you really want on your champions so yeah free ally attacks definitely a strong option here now i will timeline this so you can kind of go through from the increased attack champs the ally attacks and the weakened champs that i recommend Next one will be a Longbeard, so in the same faction as Nishak Vermin Lord, and he is probably the best one for this in my personal opinion, because he does have an attacking of all enemies, well with four allies sorry, and increases the damage inflicted by 20% and does not need books. Now I can't remember the last time that I used the Longbeard, but now I've actually found a chance to use somebody like this champion, and now I can actually just build him for this Bommel team which I will be building on my own account as well. So very, very strong um, option here. And then he also has a weakened debuff. Very strong, guys. Now, unless you've got Relentless... Actually, no, I wouldn't even recommend using it. If it was on the A1, it would have been amazing. But with the A2 ability, I guess it's great for Wave 2. It just Because it hits pretty hard from what I've been seeing. The next champion will actually be an epic one in Catacomb Counselor. Um... And he's a really good option as well because he teams up with three random allies. So a very similar thing to a Kreela. But you do not need books for this as it's only a cooldown thing. And the way that we're making this work is we're blocking off with presets for all of the ally attack champions. So this is going to be ready and you don't have to worry about cycling through these abilities here. Um, he also attacks one enemy three times and a chance of an increased attack as well on the A1 ability. So... Yeah, pretty solid option if, there, if you don't have other options out there. He can definitely do the job just to make it work for you guys. Now, the next one is going to be in the Barbarians. And it's the man with the big belly button in Farrakhan of Fats. And he just found another way to excel in this game. Because we got a value surge with these ally attack champions. And we got the increased crit rate, increased crit damage. And then all allies except this champion will attack one target enemy. Now, the one thing I would say is... Potentially build him with no accuracy or not enough accuracy in order to beat this boss. Because if he places a drop defense, you could be mitigating one of the debuffs that you need in order to one-shot Bommel, right? Because for anybody that's not aware, you only have 10 debuff slots on a boss or any target in general. So the less that we can mitigate that and have room for bombs and weakens is really when you're going to be able to amplify your damage there. But yeah, very strong option in Farrakhan the Fats. And the next one, I wouldn't say I recommend it, as you're usually building him for PvP, go second teams. It will be Necrit the Great, but he does have an ally attack, right? I forgot which ability is on. Is it this one? No. So teams up with allies to attack one enemy. All allies under ally protection boss placed by this champion will join the attack. Allies joining the attack will use their default skill. So I wouldn't highly recommend this one, but technically, yes, if you kind of lap his abilities, it could be a potential, right? Um, the next one will actually be one of the best ones. And I think this is the one that I really want now. And it's going to be Lanicus the Chosen. Because she actually has an increased attack on all allies. But has a 50-50 shot at granting an extra turn. And leading into the um, free random ally attack. Now I really feel like Lanicus is strong. Because having an increased attack. Which is why we are bringing in Arbiter. So we can kind of remove her from the equation. And then having that chance to lead into an extra turn and then team up with the allies and fills the turn meters is very strong because the reason why we're using Arbiter is we want the turn meter and we want the weakened, right? But if you've got someone like Lanicus, you can actually increase it to your attack like an Arbiter. You could team up with your allies and then fill the turn meter and then just bring in somebody else for the weakened, right? And I feel like if anybody's going to shine and you don't want to use an Arbiter... This is your golden champion right here. She's very strong for this, honestly. Um, next one will be Cardio from the High Elves, I believe. Oh no, I'm going to get bashed. Oh no, it's Sacred Order. I don't have a Cardio, so I forgot. There he is. I've got a Cardio Avatar, but I don't have a Cardio. How funny is that? 
So we do have the teams up from all allies and attacks the target enemy. And that is the main reason we would be using him. But also I feel like for a safety feature, Cardio is a very strong option. Because after he teams up with the attack, if you actually let Bomber take a turn afterwards, and let's just say hypothetically you don't one-shot him, you can then place a revive on death on all allies. So it will give time for the replacement of poison debuffs from Nishak to actually finish up the job and allow your champions to revive. So I feel like for consistency, cardio, a very good one to look out for for this boss. So yeah, really, really strong there. Now I just want to give a shout out to Lady Atessa. I believe she's from the Sacred Order as well. There she is, we found her. Now this champion actually does have um, attacks with two random allies. So if you don't care about RNG and you don't mind trying it a few times, potentially you could bring her in and just to get the job done. It might take you a free, uh, few attempts, sorry. But having any random attack um, abilities there are really cool. But I just wanted to showcase the main ones as of now. But if I did miss any of your favorite options, definitely let me know in the comment section below. Now, we do want to speak about increased attack with turn meter champions. Now, there's three that really stood out to me. Because one would actually be um, a Runekeeper Dazdurk from the Epic category. And this champion actually has an increased attack and turn meter by 25% and all allies by 25%. So this is really cool as a substitute to Arbiter if you don't want to use that champion or switch around her gear for accuracy. Now you might have to boost um, the speed of Nishak a little bit. But a 25% turn meter, 30% turn meter, it won't be too much manipulation of speed. You just want to make sure that you can turn me to boost so your all of your champions can take a turn before the boss takes a turn pretty much, right? And yeah, very strong champion to throw into the mix for those rolls. Just make sure you don't put accuracy on him for this particular build. Now the next one will actually be a Seeker from the Undead Hordes for a very similar reason. Increased attack and increased turn meter on this ability here and also grants an extra turn. So you could be dealing a little bit more damage here, right? With some Warmaster procs. So I feel like he's another one that's very strong and matches the turn meter increase of an Arbiter. So if I was to use anybody, it would probably be a Seeker once we start breaking down the weakens to coincide with this. So the next champion is actually going to be an old Hermit Jorg who has a very similar thing, but it's a 20% turn meter fill. So once again, factor in the speeds, make sure you're taking a turn before the 250 speed of Bumble the Dreadhorn and you'll be completely fine in using old Hermit Jorg there. Um, the main reason why we spoke about those champions is so we can coincide them with weakened champions. And we're preferably looking for champions that have it on the A1 ability. Because the way that we want this to work is, especially coinciding with those three other champions I just mentioned, is when you're joining in with the ally attacks, it gives you as many chances as possible to place a weakened debuff. And another thing that I'm fracturing in here is... Um, affinities. We do not want magic affinity because we want to mitigate all of the RNG as possible as we already have a bit of RNG with the bombs, right? So I'm just going to speed through these very briefly. I'm not going to speak about that whole kit, but Brackus the Shifter, great for wave clearing on wave two. We also have the weakened ability on the A2 ability, which attacks six times. So great for damage, great for the waves, and a strong chance to place that weaken at a 100% chance being the force affinity. Now, make sure you guys are um, doing the accuracy stats on these with over 370, 380 accuracy to place your weaken consistently. Um, the next one is going to be a Zargala from the Orcs. And once again, I've kind of broken down the best ones for wave clearing as that's the, the worst part of this. Uh, where's Zargala gone? There she is. Because she does have the crack armor. She does have the attacking all enemies three times. But she's, she's got a 50-50 shot out of weaken. And if you're bringing in ally attacks, once again, that's going to start to become consistent. So the one that actually showcased in my video was actually from the Demon Spawn with the Helicaf. Very strong for weaken, very strong for wave clearing, and also a block damage ability that you can throw up after you get hit. If you don't one shot the boss, place the block damage and allow the poison to finish up the rest. Um, the next one will be from the Shadowkin, and it's going to be Karatu Funksada. Where is he? The Fox Hunter himself actually has a weaken on the A1, but each hit has a 20% chance, 30% chance once booked of placing that weaken. So in terms of consistency, this could probably be one of the best weakened champions out there because having a each hit, considering the two ally attacks, you've got like six potential times to proc a weaken and he's the right affinity for it. 
and very strong for the waves with the blocking of active skills. Um, the next one will be a turbo from the Barbarians. You guys know about this champion, absolute beast, but he has a weaken on the A1. And then from the Shadow King, we had Kayoku right here. So places three hits if the target is under three or more debuffs, but it's just a one time if it's not under debuffs. But still a great option out there for ally attack. And then the final one will be a Wuji. I think she's from here. There she is. So she's got a smaller chance, but it's definitely a viable chance for a weakened champion on the A1 skill with some AoEs for block buffs and some perfect veils and counterattacks for the waves themselves. But yeah, guys, um, that's pretty much going to be all for today's video. I just wanted to talk about the value surge of these champions and especially when you speak about building this Bomber 90 team. I'm not speaking about everywhere in this game, purely about this team in preparation so you guys can start farming this on your future rotations. And guys, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We are on road to hit 19,000 by the end of the year. And thank you for everybody that's been supporting the channel as of recently. I'll catch you guys in the next one and peace.